Historic Hinkle Field House in Indianapolis. Got a little full court pressure. Got a post up to the middle. And they get it over. Good diagonal pass. They've got him a big part of this Butler team as a true freshman. Trying to get Smith a little involved. Want to rotate him to the box. Number 44. Barlow trying to shake Stockton. Now Marshall from the baseline. He's a veteran player. He can give you points. He's also an explosive athlete. They are so well drilled. Always looking for the good shot. In fact, he told us before the game, one of our unbelievable rules, better shots. We have to take good shots. Olenek misses inside. He had a great shot right there. He can up strong enough. Olenek was really in terrific post position. Spacing is so important with Butler. You watch the good spacing, 15 to 17 feet apart. Eliminates help. Dono. Just a sliver of space, and he buries a three. He's a typical Hoosier shooter, man. That kid has been shooting the jumper. Look at their execution. They don't convert. Got two layups in a row, the last two possessions. One by Olenek, one by Dower. Butler with the momentum. Nothing like shooting that three to give you some momentum. Trying to take down a terrifically talented Gonzaga team without Rodney Clark, their leading scorer, better than 16 a game. They sent a message loud and clear how good they were to beat that Indiana team. As that is a quality Indiana team. And Gonzaga's had a brutally tough schedule as well. They've beaten team after team as Marshall fouls Olenek. And we're going to a timeout with 7-10 to play. Excitement tonight and a little bit of excitement here on this court during game day this morning where Kevin Schwartz, one of Butler's biggest fans, knocked down a half-court shot to win himself a big pile change. He'll join us when we come back. He got it with one! Or not to be more productive, to get... So far here at Hinkle Fieldhouse with the Butler roaring back to take a two-point lead over Gonzaga. And what excitement there was this morning at a game day for a certain junior here at Butler, Kevin Schwartz, who broke an 0-for-32 drought, hitting the half-court shot, the State Farm Challenge. Congratulations. What did that feel like? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah? Um, I practiced with the women's uh, team here, and after every practice, all of the guys shoot half-court shots for fun. We have contest. So I'm pretty comfortable with that shot. And I knew when I put it up, it was going in. Really? I wanted to really? do it with everybody to make sure, make sure I got the ball first. Nice. Tell you what, he's got some swag. He yeah. came out there. He was comfortable. He said, I was comfortable shooting that shot from there. Now, here's the best part of the story. You had a State Farm Challenge. You win 18000 right? Yeah. Tell us what, what you told the guys this morning. What's the first thing you're going to do with the money? Well, I'm going to first pay off my Maui debt because I flew out there to watch the Bulldogs play in the Invitational. How's that? And then it was oh. great. <laughs> if you watch the Rodney shot from the Marquette game, I'm right behind. The bench I believe crazy. we have that video. We'll, we'll show that when we get a chance. Big man on campus, baby. You're going to be big man on campus. I love it here. It's great. How many text messages have you gotten today? Uh, I was over like 150 at some point. <laughs> what about followers on Twitter? <laughs> Got another 100. So. Tell us a little bit about coming to watch as Dunham leaves the three a little bit short. A long rebound and a loose ball to the Zags. Tell us what it's like for this to be the home court of your basketball team. Oh, this is one of the most historic venues in all of basketball, college, ball, high school. The state of Indiana is phenomenal when it comes to basketball. When it's packed like this and everybody's going crazy. Oh, the right there, Smith. I'll tell you what, you hear what he speaks? He's taking my job. This kid has got potential. John Warhawk, do you hear about this? This guy's got potential. Butler back on top. Just over six minutes to go in the first half. Is today the first time you actually took a shot on the court in this building? Oh, I've, I've taken a couple shots on this court because we practice every day in here with the girls. And every once in a while, I'll scoot my way in here with my own ball and take some. But it's always a blessing to be able to come in here and shoot because it's such a, an amazing place with so much history. Olenek ties the game at 24. Taylor Olenek had a great move right there. The reverse drop step. Taking the ball with a goal. One of the most improved players in America. He was on a shirt last year. Yeah. Scout team. Murphy said he's the lightest up. And Mark 
few said he improved his body, improved his game, improved his outlook on the game. Let's go back to Maui, as Kevin Schwartz was talking about, and take a look at that shot, that miracle shot that Rodney Clark made to beat Marquette. Keep an eye on Clark. But there's Kevin right there. There's our guy. Up goes the shot. Butler wins the game. And it's madness in Maui. You've had a good year. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a good career. Here. Thanks very much. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks, for, you. Thanks for joining us. Let's look at the future. Yeah. Go dogs. Kevin Schwartz, a junior risk management and insurance major, but a guy uh, having a good day. Sick of the half court shot, eighteen thousand dollars richer after the shot this morning. You know what I like about it? He's got a lot of good school spirit. You can feel yeah. it. And we got a good game. Roosevelt Jones gives Butler the lead. That's Jones' greatest strength. We able to get in the blue area and attack the basket in the three-second area. Dower. It won't stay down. Jones with a rebound. You talk about Jones. He's defined very simply. Toughness. Toughness. You know, last year these two teams met in Spokane. The Zags won the rematch here this year. The, the series is not due to continue, but boy, it would be great. And, and these two coaches have so much respect and admiration for one another. Hopefully, uh, this is a series that continues. These are two of the best pro As you said, forget the, the term mid-major. These are two great programs, and how much fun is it to have them playing each other? Well, Brad Stevens said it. We want to do it. We yeah, want to continue. Yeah. Jones with the shot clock running down, calling for the offensive foul. He dipped that shoulder in right there. Good call by the officials. Brad doesn't like it, but he definitely dipped the shoulder in. Take a look right here. See that shoulder to the left arm? Pangos. You knock your head. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're going to be a seamer. I think you could be a great seamer. Pango's taking the charge. Gonzaga leading early, Butler coming back and starting to knock down some outside shots and they get a two-point lead as Fromm will check into the game. You know, I think one of the keys right now if you're Brad Stevens and you're a Butler fan is the tempo. Right now, they're in tempo. They're not allowing them to get up and down the floor. You have very rarely see the number game in favor of Gonzaga. Three on two, four on two. Gonzaga averaging better than 80 points per game. They are one of the highest scoring teams and one of the best shooting teams in the nation. This guy's a big reason why is Olenek finally gets one to go. Six has, points now for Olenek. He has really developed an inside post presence. In fact, he's the first player at Gonzaga to go 30-30 yeah. two consecutive games since Adam Morrison right. did it. Back in 2006, Olympic from Kamloops, British Columbia, was mostly a perimeter player in high school, even though he's a seven-footer, but as we mentioned, getting much more comfortable playing inside this year. I used to love watching Adam play. He was such a terrific college player. From the offensive rebound, Woods the three. And Olenek down to the board for the Zags, and then fouled by Fromm. Yeah, not a good foul right there. You're 94 feet away from the goal. It's okay to hustle, but you got to hustle intellectually. you got to hustle with some good IQ. We are tied at 26 as we take you to the under four media timeout. And Kelly Olenek, the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Month, one of the most improved players in the country, six points on the night to tie it up. It's way past big speech time. I've enjoyed spending the last few days with you. Let's go out and win this for all the little shows that never had a chance to make it here. I want to win it for me. On three, one, two, three. Game day! Game day. The best part is at the end of it, Jay Billis says, I'll make it, like the Jimmy Chitwood line. And Brad Stevens says, let Jalen take the shot. <laughs> and the guys are getting ready. They're out of the Hickory jerseys. They're back in the fancy clothes. And are getting ready for the UPS halftime report. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, Digger Phelps, Jalen Rose, number one loses. What a finish that was in Louisville as Syracuse steals one in the closing seconds. Ohio State, Michigan State went down to the wire. Florida, so impressive today wichita state beating creighton oregon winning at ucla a lot to talk about at halftime i'll do one thing what a phenomenal day in college basketball 
Olenek inside for two more. He's heating up. He's now got eight. Nice little screen and roll right there. Olenek draws to the basket, catches, converts. Say one thing, though, in that Hickory lineup that we just had, I'd give the ball to Rose or Sully Billis and Doug Reese Davis to make the pass and get out of the way. <laughs> You can see the Bulldogs, they broke out some new uniforms for this game. They don't have their names on the back of the jerseys. They've all got the word Bulldogs written where their names normally are. Olenek floats it up inside, and Dower, who's been terrific in the first half, draws the foul. Well, we got some great action coming your way on the holiday. Big Monday, four games on ESPN. Cincinnati, Syracuse. The Orange will move up in the rankings. Oklahoma State at Baylor. Georgetown and Notre Dame. And then Texas and Oklahoma. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Well, if I would go with my top three right now, my top four, I'd go Kansas four, three, I'd go Syracuse, two, I'd go Michigan. We saw them the other day. And based on the resume of Duke, Duke's got to be number one. And we'll see them as number one down in Miami on Wednesday. A good Miami team. So you would drop Louisville, Indiana down there like five and six. I would Louisville probably five and the other six. I'll tell you, Gonzaga at eight here, if they can pick up a win in this kind of an environment on the road, they might move up a notch or two. Butler turnover. Lobby inside for Olenek and a foul. They're going really against the Bulldogs. Hey, Dan, they're really trying the to take advantage Bulldogs. of Olenek on the yep. inside. Here's a look at some of the closing moments in the Syracuse-Louisville game. Michael Carter-Williams with the steal, the run out, and the jam that gave the Orange the lead in the closing seconds. And they would, I believe, add one free throw after that and win 70 to 68, doing it without James Sutherland on the road against the number one team in the yeah. nation. They beat a quality team, but Jim Beham has been such an unbelievable winner throughout his career. That's just another W in his... Smith guarding a limit. Move that really broke down the last couple of possessions. Two-man game. And Olenek is tied up by Smith. The arrow will keep it with Gonzaga. Well, olenek has gotten the best of Smith here thus far in the first half. You can see the connection that he and Pangos have. They've been running that two-man game time and time again. Gary Bell to inbound. And Pango says the ability off that two-man game to step back and shoot the three. That makes it such a dangerous combination. Olenek out on the perimeter looking for help. Now finds Pangos. They really try to get in Pangos' face, knowing how he can shoot that three. Three to shoot. Olenek, a little bit short, rebound down to Smith. Two minutes to go in a spirited first half here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. It would really help them if they get some point production inside on Smith. He had a solid game against Richmond. How about a three from Smith? What I need is Smith. Smith. And he puts up points on the ball. He says, forget about two. I'm going to step out and shoot the three. That's his eighth made three-pointer in 25 attempts this season. Hart kicks it out to Pangos, who misses the three. And then we're going to have an over-the-back foul against Dunham. Take a look right here. They kick it out to Andrew Smith. Steps up. Shoots the three with lots of confidence. Olenek to the bench. Karnowski back in. And Hart to the line. A former walk-on. More than half of his rebounds come at the offensive end. And Mark Few says with, with great affection and admiration, he doesn't care if he plays one minute or 20 minutes. Whatever helps the team, he'll go to Coach Few and say, maybe you should start this guy instead of me. Get him going. Just a guy who does all the, the blue-collar things to help his team, but he just missed the front end of a big one and one Now you think about some of the great players that have come out of mid-major. I'm going to call my role Larry Bird team. Came out of French Lake, Indiana State. Think about guys like Stephen Curry down there, Davidson, Hershey Hawkins down Bradley, Carl Malone, Louisiana Tech, Keith Van Horn, Utah, Keith Lee, Memphis. That's a pretty good team. Not bad. These two programs as Stigal. Oh. It's a deep three. Oh, you're right, Danny. Yes, that's a deep, deep three. He, he went several weeks without scoring at all after the Indiana game until the Dayton game. But now with Rodney Clark, they need him. And the philosophy in the Butler program is next man up, next man in. And 
Adams to Gals doing his buddy Clark proud. Any women, they also need Dunham to make those threes. We're coming back. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. bringing us cookies. We got to come back. Uh, we got to come back. Yes, sir. Right? We got to come back. This here, has been baby. great. Been a I want to fight of a cookie. I'm starving. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, so give us your give us your uh, review of Hinkle so far. Your first time here. Five plus. I don't give it a five. I give it a five plus. It is everything Wrigley and Fenway. Same scenario. Yep. Gonzaga ball. That cookie I give a five plus two. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? Oh. Eddie with the drive. Dower for three. What a first half for Sam Dower. He's been brilliant off the bench. Brilliant. He has almost half of Gonzaga's points. Dower averages 7.2 points in 18 minutes per game. He's got 16 already here tonight. See, that's why they're so difficult to defend. You don't know who's going to break out for them. They have a number of guys. He told us before the game, we have at least five to six guys that can put 20 on the board. Shot clock, game clock, just about bang on. So Butler will attempt to hold for a final look and attempt to take a lead into the half. I think right now, tempo, edge, Butler. They love this kind of tempo. And a timeout taken by Brad Stevens, who's asking the official where's the ball before he puts in his final play. Well, the pair of teams looking to stay atop their division will meet when David West leads the Indiana Pacers against Rudy Gay of the Memphis Grizzlies. NBA Special Edition presented by State Farm Monday at 1 Eastern on ESPN and also live on WatchESPN.com. they got a pretty good NBA team in this town too, don't they? What about the kid George? He's doing a great oh, George, job. Yep. Should be an All-Star. Yep. Should be an All-Star rather. Yep. He's been absolutely sensational. Remember, no Danny Granger. He's been injured this year, but the Pacers are still playing some great basketball. Butler and Gonzaga have both played some great ball here tonight. This one has been everything we could have hoped for and more. Historic Hinkle Fieldhouse and two terrific national power programs in Gonzaga. And Butler and the man of the night so far, perhaps somewhat of an unlikely candidate, has been Sam Dower, who has more than doubled his scoring average already. You know, you look at the win streaks in the country and how Kansas hung on to beat Texas today. 15 in a row. Utah State is up there. Butler has 12 in a row. Creighton got beat today, so they're gone. Louisville had 11 in a row. Creighton, they're both gone. Watch BCU. They've won 11 in a row. And I'll tell you, Shaka Smart's got an outstanding team. The first half comes to a close here at Hinkle with visiting Gonzaga, clinging to a one-point lead over Butler, 33 to 32 after a great 20 minutes of action. Shannon Spake is with Butler coach Brad Stevens. Coach Gonzaga was able to get up about nine points to start this game. What was the key in getting back that lead and keeping them in within your sight? Well, their, their field goals that they made, with the exception of Pangos's three, were all twos. Ours were mostly threes, and so. That kept us in the game. We did. A, we didn't do a very good job guarding their interior. Somewhat to be expected when you look at those guys, but uh, we got to do a better job in the second half. Kelly Olynyk, you've held him to eight, but Sam Dower has had 16. What adjustment? Well, Sam Dower's hit jump shots. Kudos to him. You know, I think one of the things we got to do is make those a little bit harder. But you, know, you got to give away something when you're under undersized in there, and we're clogging the lane, and he's making shots, and so we're going to have to adjust. Thanks, coach. Yep. Thanks. All right, Shannon, thank you. One point game of the half here at Hinkle. Don't miss the second half from Indianapolis here tonight. But first, Reese Davis and the guys deliver the UPS halftime reports. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Now that's better. And AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Again. It's small by today's standards. But if the only other field house you'd ever seen was a barn, and you came here to play for the title back when the Indiana State High School Tournament was open, then it was big. Oh, man. Really big. Those days are gone. But the message of Hoosiers lives on in this national historic landmark. It reminds us from every rafter 
through every window of the values we share and the power of dreams. Since 1928 on this court, championships have been won. Hard lessons have been learned, lives have been changed. But the essence of the game will always be the same in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Welcome back to Saturday Primetime, presented by Direct TV. Tonight's game also a part of my home court week, our week-long celebration of the great college basketball arenas and venues around the country. And this is one of them. If you weren't with us in the first half, this is Hinkle Fieldhouse. This is where Hoosiers was filmed, and this is where the game that inspired Hoosiers actually happened. The Mile and Miracle when they won the state championship in 1954. The Big O, Oscar Robertson won state championships in this building in 55 and 56. And unbelievable first half, unbelievable atmosphere. What do you think is going to decide this game in the second half? Well, I think it's going to come down to the three ball. There's no question. Right now, when you look at the Butler, the reason they're in the game, only down one. They made four more threes than Gonzaga. Second key factor, they've been able to control Temple, not allowing Gonzaga to go up and down the floor and get layups. And I think that's a major factor. I think if they can do that, they can come down a wire. This is a very talented Gonzaga team and a very physical Butler team. Shannon Spake has some Gonzaga adjustments for the second half. Yeah, Dad, uh, Coach Few told me earlier today that Butler is the one team that can really frustrate you. He told his players earlier this afternoon that you have to approach them like you're sawing wood. It might take a while, but eventually you'll get there. He told me no frustrations at all in the locker room. He feels like his players have been very poised. His bigs have done a tremendous job. He just said he wanted to defend the Butler shooters a little bit harder. Tell you one thing, Shannon, you mentioned the bigs. The kid Dower was sensational. 16 big points. That was a major plus for Gonzaga. Only four Zags scored in the first half. Dower had all the bench points as Jones, and there it is. The floater, the shot put, whatever you want to call it. But that's a go-to shot for him. Well, he loves to get in that blue area, that three-second area. you got to keep him out of there. Olenek into Harris, back to Olenek. Follows his own miss. Cut the ball. You know, they were much more effective when Harris was on the floor. He got those fouls and had to go to the sideline, and that really hurt Gonzaga. Barlow, former walk-on, operating as the starting point guard with the sharpshooter Rodney Clark out of the spring neck. For Butler, Jones blocked from behind. The Zags have a chance for numbers. Harris to a win it. They're going to get back so quickly. Bell misses the jumper, and an over-the-back foul on Hart. Michael Hart picks up his third less than a minute into the second half. Well, he's a hustle player right there, and he tried to make a hustle play, but he reached over. See, it was a great job right there in transition. It looked like they have numbers. Butler got back, yep. squared off, and made them throw the ball back out to the perimeter for really a quick shot. As you said in the first half, one team, Gonzaga, known more for its offense. One team, Butler, known more for its defense. Yeah, they've won some shootouts this year offensively, Gonzaga. finds Marshall up and off the rim Smith is stripped Barlow hits the deck along with Pangos it'll be Butler's ball all because of hustle diving on the floor scrapping floor making it happen college basketball what a day today go to Syracuse and Louisville game think about Michigan State Ohio State and now right here Gonzaga look at that hustle are you kidding me that's a walk-on baby he busted his gut to earn a scholarship hit a big three earlier tonight and had the game-winning shot of the win over Indiana earlier this season and he played well against Dayton on the road his mom and dad both are season ticket holders of Dayton Butler moving into the A-10 this year. Tougher lead for them. Bigger bodies. Picks sixth preseason. But they're on their way, it looks like, to another great year, especially if Kellen Dunham keeps knocking him down. He is a shooter, man. You can just see the release, the form, the way he squares the body. What an environment. What an atmosphere. We're getting paid for this, Dan Schumer. Look at this. Barlow with a steal, and then he lost the ball out of bounds. Little communication, tough to communicate and hear each other, but he had a trailer. He had Marshall trailer with a little hook pass for a layup. And not only did he lose the ball out of bounds, he was also called for a charge on the play, even though he'd already lost the ball when he ran over Pango. So Barlow with a turnover 
And a foul. And here come the Zags down by four. What a story when you think about Brad Stevens, Eli Lilly, pharmaceutical. <laughs> Sixth season as the head coach. These are two of the three winning as coaches. Another great battle. And Barlow forces the turnover. I mean, that kid, it becomes contagious. That's what they were talking about. Mark Few was telling us before the game how hard they play, how they're so physical, so tough. They really buy into all the things that have happened since 2006 when they won the NIT championship, a significant win over a good Gonzaga team. Olenek with a steal. And Harris, boy, is he clever and tricky around the rim. Punched the court really well. Nice pass by Olenek. That's how you win. But that win was significant in 2006. That sort of gave them the kickboard to start this run. In fact, that was a win. That got beat the good North Carolina team in the semifinal. Elan Rietti is back in for Hart for the Zags. Battle of the Bulldogs. Butler and Gonzaga. And we took a picture. We took pictures with the mascots. Yeah. With blue two and blue three. Yeah. Jones is called for the travel. Where's blue one? <laughs> I stumped you. <laughs> I, we want to send our sympathies out to the Weavers family and to Stan Musial. I know you're oh. a baseball for Chicago. Two on, legendary tell figures. I mean, how many hits? Come on, how three, many hits? 3,630. What a good fact. 331, I think. Wow. Good, good fact about Stan Musial. 3,630 like hits. 1,815 on the road, 1,815 at home. Wow. It is true. Stan Musial died today at age 92, or Weaver dying at age. I believe 83, two legendary figures in baseball. And our sympathies to their families and to the Cardinal and Oriole families as well. Let me say thank you for all the memories and all the great times. You got a chance to do baseball. So <laughs> foul on the inside. And Eddie will go to the line. Eddie is from the Ivory Coast. Harris, as we mentioned, is from Germany. Pangos and Olenek are both from Canada. Pangos from Newmarket, Ontario. Olenek from Kamloops, British Columbia. And he's a tremendous athlete. Yeah. Some say the best athlete on the team. And Karnowski is from Poland. They have five international players. And Tommy Lloyd, one of their assistants, gets all the credit from Mark Few for scouring overseas tournaments, international tournaments, and, and finding great international players and once one two three of them have a great experience the word spreads and absolutely end up attracting more international players well, it's a great place to play as well you got a tremendous environment here but down at the kennel it's special out there in spokane one of the biggest fans they have is judd hitko who coached magic johnson one of my favorite players of all time yeah mark few says he'll get a phone call from coach Heathcote tomorrow to discuss the game break it down tell him where he can improve he knows basketball. Yeah. I tell you, you listen when Judd speaks. Done him a deep one. He got fouled. He got fouled. I mean, their range is unbelievable. I mean, that's not a three-point shot. That's almost like a five. Well, let it call for the foul. Three free throws coming for Dunham, who just about knocked this down as well. Look at that range. I mean, way beyond the three line. What does this kid play with a lot of composure? confidence as we check in with Shannon Spake again. Yeah, Dan, Coach Stevens told me today that Dunham is a game changer. When his shots go in, the players on this team know what a difference he can make. He also said he's a very humble guy, so putting him in the lineup was very easy. A great free throw shooter, but he missed the first one here. Dunham came into this game at 93% on the season. He makes two or three here. This game may come down with a free throw line. The way it looks right now. So I think it's important for Butler to have that lead because you don't want to have to play at a faster pace and try to catch them. You play at your pace right now. Look at the up inside. They swarm a Lennox and take it away. Ready to help from the guards reaching in, causing that deflection. Talk so much about this building named after Tony Hinko, Hall of Fame coach. Originally known as the Butler Fieldhouse, Hinko coached basketball here for 41 years, also coached baseball and football. And those, days, those days you had to do it 